Would you rise for the reading of Scripture? Scripture today is from Haggai 2, verses 1 through 9. On the 21st day of the seventh month, the word of the Lord came through the prophet Haggai. Speak to Jerubabel, son of Shealtiel, governor of Judah, to Joshua, son of Josadak, the high priest, and to the remnant of the people. Ask them, who of you is left who saw this house in its former glory? How does it look to you now? Does it not seem to you like nothing? But now be strong, Jerubabel, declares the Lord. Be strong, Joshua, son of Josedek, the high priest. Be strong, all you people of the land, declares the Lord, and work. For I am with you, declares the Lord Almighty. This is what I covenanted with you when you came out of Egypt, and my spirit remains among you. Do not fear. This is what the Lord Almighty says. In a little while, I will once more shake the heavens and the earth, sea and the dry land. I will shake all nations, and what is desired by all nations will come, and I will fill this house with glory, says the Lord Almighty. The silver is mine, and the gold is mine, declares the Lord Almighty. The glory of this present house will be greater than the glory of the former house, says the Lord Almighty, and in this place I will grant peace, declares the Lord Almighty. The word of the Lord for the people of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Thank you, Dixie, for reading the word to us this morning. I want to talk to you this morning about longing for the good old days. Let's pray. Father, thank you for this moment, this time, when we open your word and let your word speak to us. It's active. It's alive. That's what you say. And we trust that, Lord, that your Holy Spirit would use it to touch our hearts. Show us what you want to show us this morning. Lord, we, we lay our lives before you. Reveal that to us. Let the words of my mouth, the meditations of all of our hearts be acceptable in your sight. O oh Lord, you are our strength and our redeemer. In Jesus' name, amen. I don't have to tell you that we live in a moment of history that's filled with great anxiety and even more great discouragement. Things don't just seem unsettled, but even chaotic. On a national level, we look around at so many issues facing our country, including, but not limited to, our economy and inflation and children behind in schools due to the pandemic and rising crime. And the language being thrown around between the two political parties is largely vitriolic and hateful. And all of this comes about as we have another election this coming Tuesday. And I do think as Americans, enjoying the blessings of living in a democratic free society, it's important that we as Christians take the time to express our freedom by voting our convictions. So if you haven't done that yet, please go vote on Tuesday. But that's on a national level. And then, and then we pause to look at our church, Hill Country Christian Church. We have a wonderful property, a wonderful facility. Just last year, at this very time, we celebrated the 20th anniversary of moving into this building. And a very few of you in our church family were here for that day. And it was exciting. It was filled with promise. And yet when comparing our present day situation, post-COVID, and after many of those original people have chosen to leave for various reasons, we might tend to ask ourselves a similar question that God asked the people in our Bible passage. Do you remember? Does anyone remember this house, this temple, in its former splendor? How in comparison does it look to you now? It must seem like nothing at all. That's what God said to them. So that's on the church level. And then there are those disappointments on a personal level. Maybe you're not as healthy as you used to be. 
You try to do things you used to do, but you don't have stamina for it anymore. I know that feeling. And I know it can be depressing. When we finally look in the mirror and we realize we're not as strong or as fit as we used to be. You try to make a muscle and there's more hanging under the arm than there is on top of the arm. (laughs) And it's not just about our physical condition. We get discouraged about any number of things. Sometimes our personal relationships aren't what we know they ought to be or what we want them to be. We look back and we conclude that what we have today or what we enjoy today or where we are today pales in comparison to yesterday. We see that nationally. We see that as a church. We see that on a personal level. We look at what was then and what is now and we long for the good old days. That's what they're doing in this passage. We didn't get the background before we read it, but this event that was read today from the book of Haggai happened 2,500 years ago. 500 years before Jesus was born. And yet we can identify with their feelings. After spending 70 years in exile in the nation of Babylon, they finally returned to Jerusalem, which had been totally decimated, totally destroyed. When laying siege to the nation, the Babylonians destroyed all the walls around Jerusalem, as well as the beautiful temple they had built. There wasn't even one stone left. They returned to find a land of utter devastation. And as you read through the Old Testament, they rebuilt the walls of Jerusalem under the leadership of Nehemiah. That's what his book in the Bible is about. They laid the foundation for this new temple under Ezra's leadership. That's what that book is about. But then they lost their focus. For 18 years, there was no progress on rebuilding the temple. And so God raised up a prophet named Haggai to challenge them to get their priorities back in sync with God's priorities. And so they've been back at work with it for about a month, and then they realize that what they're building is nothing like the temple they used to have. I mean, Solomon's temple had been a glorious building, one of the great wonders of the ancient world. It had been built with imported cedar trees from Lebanon. Uh, it, It had been decked out with precious stones. The whole thing had been overlaid with gold. The altar, the cherubim, the floor, the front porch, and the Holy of Holies were all covered in gold. Even the nails were made of gold. And so, the people of Israel looked at the reality of their present situation and compared it to a glorious past, and they became discouraged. They couldn't see God in the midst of it all. They asked, and and we asked the same type of questions. Is this as good as it gets? Are we to live with disappointment and only the memories of better days from the past? How do we find hope in what feels like a hopeless or at least a disappointing time in our lives? Let's look at this passage and find out. First of all, the cause of discouragement. I've already talked about this a little bit, but as we look at the story, we learn that we become discouraged when our involvement in God's work appears to be insignificant. As the people of Haggai's generation looked at this second temple they were building, it looked like nothing in comparison to Solomon's temple. I mean, Solomon built that temple. Not only was it so lavish, but it was built during the golden age of Israel's history. Israel's borders extended further than they had ever extended before and further than they have ever extended since. And during this golden age, people came from the other nations just to see Israel's greatness, to hear King Solomon's wisdom, to witness for themselves the beauty and the grandeur of Solomon's temple. But in Haggai's generation, Israel was still an occupied territory. They'd been exempt from that territory for 70 years. Now they're back, but even though they're back in their homeland, they're still under the control 
of the Persian Empire. Their economy was struggling greatly. Does that sound familiar? And the second temple they were building seemed pitiful in comparison to Solomon's temple. And so in their minds, this second temple would never match the glory and the greatness of the first temple. They felt like their contribution was insignificant. And you know, if we choose to, we can feel the same way. Looking back at Hill Country Christian Church, a great promising beginning that somehow hasn't lived up to the expectations. I mean, I've seen pictures from 20 years ago. I've seen a full building. I've heard some of you talk about those days with great fondness. And so we too can get discouraged. Our membership and our attendance have declined from those days. Our financial giving has decreased from those days. And so we could choose up, choose to throw up our hands and say, oh well, there's nothing we can do. But I want to tell you something that gives hope to this pastor's heart. I don't see that kind of reaction in the people gathered in this room. I see a family of people willing to pitch in and do whatever they can to get the word out that our church may be smaller, but it does indeed have a big heart. That this church values children and families and wants to come alongside parents to provide spiritual and emotional support. And we see that through things that have already been mentioned today. The turnout for the trunk or treat, uh, the Beds of Hope ministry, the St. Jude's Ranch for Children ministry, uh, the upcoming event the Friday after Thanksgiving. We want to get the word out about our church. We believe there's a future. And so that's what brings us to the next point. The solution to discouragement. Uh, in addition to commanding them to be strong, Haggai also tells them to keep building. To refuse to give in to fear. And so Haggai reminds them of some of the promises of God. God has promised to be with them. God says, I am with you about 18 separate times in the Bible. And every time God says He's with the person, that message comes at a critical point in the person's life. A time when that person desperately needs to hear a word of assurance from God. See, the phrase means more than God is present because God is already personally present everywhere. He's always present. For God to say, I am with you, means God is on our side in what we're doing. That He is our advocate. He's our ally. He's our friend. He is a very present help to us. And so He reminds them through Haggai, God does, that He has a covenant relationship with them. And that will never be broken. And also that the Holy Spirit is at work among them. Now, that's really interesting because the Old Testament doesn't say a lot about the Holy Spirit. But here is one of the rare places where we find the Spirit of God mentioned in this book. God's Spirit is guiding them. God's Spirit's leading them, strengthening them, empowering them. And so... We are not to live in a land of regret. We need to move on and turn to God in our present situation. I think way too many people out there are living unhappy, dissatisfied lives because they're too busy missing the days gone by, missing the good old days, and, and too busy trying to reproduce something that cannot be reconstructed, cannot be replicated. The past will always be the past. But I want you to know something, Hill Country Christian Church. God is with us. Just like He was with the people in Haggai's day. Not just His presence, but His power. 
He's here to enable us, to help us, to strengthen us, to encourage us. How do I know that? Because of the one we worship. One of Jesus' titles, we'll be talking about it a lot in Advent, is the name Emmanuel, which means God with us. In fact, Jesus, His last words on this earth, He promised He will always be with us and He will be with us to the end of time, to the end of the age, and wherever we go. In fact, God has promised to us as Christians that He will never leave us or forsake us. That He's on our side forever. No matter what. In times of discouragement, we must never forget this bedrock truth. And then finally, the results beyond discouragement. This is really interesting. Notice what God tells them. I truly find this fascinating. He has already admitted that the temple they're constructing now looks like nothing compared to the first temple. And then God has the audacity to say, the future glory of this temple, this one that you're building that's so much smaller, the future glory of this temple will be greater than its past glory, says the Lord of heaven's armies. What could he possibly mean? It doesn't seem like God's dealing in reality here. Well, here's the rest of the story. The reason that the glory of this temple would be greater than the glory of Solomon's temple is because this temple they are building will be the very temple Jesus would come to. Jesus would enter when He walked this earth. This would be the place that God Himself would visit in the person of Jesus Christ. Solomon's temple, for all its grandeur, for all its glory, could never make that claim. And that's also something that the people in Haggai's day could never conceive when they were looking at it with just their physical eyes. And here's what I want us to see. Their smallness could not restrain God's bigness. So even though this small beginning of a temple looks like nothing now, God has some big plans for the future. And this window into the future is designed to help them believe that God will use this temple beyond the limitations of their own vision. Beyond just what they can see with their eyes. And what might that say to us this morning as a church body? If our goal is to become something that we've been in the past, to recreate the good old days, then that's neither a worthy or an attainable goal. And we will live in perpetual disappointment. You see, our church may not ever attain as high attendance as it had in the past. It might. I hope it does. But who knows? But the tr bigger truth is this. That God can use Hill Country Christian Church beyond the limitations of our own vision. He's already at work behind the scenes. God is not finished with us. He has something more. Something better than we can even imagine. How do I know that? Because of a prayer... Paul offered for the Christians at the church in Ephesus. And he closed the prayer like this. And since it's in God's Word, since it's inspired Scripture, it's a prayer for us as well. Here's what he wrote. Now to him who is able to do immeasurably more than all we ask or imagine, according to his power that is at work within us, to him be glory in the church and in Christ Jesus throughout all generations forever and ever. Amen. Did you get that? More than we can ask. Higher than we can think or imagine. God is able to do by His power within us. And notice, throughout all generations, forever and ever. That proves that that prayer 
is for us today. As surely as it was for the church at Ephesus when Paul wrote it down. I want to give you one other word of instruction. And this is kind of a practical thing when we have a tendency to compare. I think it's so true. It's easy to remember the past as better than it really was so that the present seems worse than it really is. We romanticize the good old days. It would help us to be reminded of Zechariah chapter 4, verse 10, which tells us, this is what God says, to not despise the day of small beginnings. So even though we're small, God is always doing more than we see. And what we might think as small and insignificant isn't that way to God. So here's a new flesh. The old days aren't coming back. In fact, Ecclesiastes 7.10, that's one of the wisdom books in the Old Testament, offers us some wisdom. Here's what it says. Do not say, why were the old days better than these? For it is not wise to ask such questions. So let's celebrate what God is doing now and what He will continue to do in the future. Let's all watch our words when we talk about our lives and about this church. Our complaining can discourage. Our comparing can deflate. And our criticism can damage others. I haven't heard people speak bad about this church, but I'm just saying, let's speak positive. We have a positive future. God's presence is with us. God's promise is for us. God's power is within us. And courage comes from knowing God is with us and for us and within us. We can do all things through Christ who strengthens us. We don't have to keep longing for the good old days. We can trust God and live with anticipation for what He will do in us and through us in the good new days. Let's pray. Father, thank You for this Word from Your Word that I do believe has something to say to all of us on a personal level and as a church body. Help us to not get discouraged. Help us not to be like the people in Haggai's day. Help us to see that You have something bigger, greater than we can even imagine. If we'll just trust You and live with faith and believe and move forward in faith. So thank you for the people who have come before us that we honor today. That may we live lives of faithfulness. May we leave a legacy for those who come after us by the way we live by faith and we trust you. In Jesus' name, amen.